we are here to talk about uh, you know Pacific Alliance and how we can support uh, in business you know in between the Pacific Alliance so this is going to be just one question for all of you guys uh, see how we can uh, this you know dynamic here so from your perspective how the countries representing the Pacific Alliance can support business expansion for technology companies uh, who wants to start with that We sort of define already who's going to start speaking, so it's my job to start. Oh, okay. No, but uh, I think to, to start off first um, and, and, and talk about how can we support uh, uh, technologies, we need to understand the, in the environment that we're in right now in the world. Um, and, and everybody, I think, has it in the back of their mind or in front of their mind for, for some business opportunities. But um, the Pacific Alliance, number one, stands for free trade. And we stand for breaking down barriers. You know? uh, our four countries have come together with a specific objective on breaking these barriers in different areas. Number one, trade. Over 90% of our goods are duty free in the exchange of our countries. Number two, we have matched our stock exchanges because we want an open market. Number three, as our, our uh, angel investor talked about, we are focusing on free mobility of talent within our countries. And number four, I would say there's a great deal of opportunity, $3.7 trillion in GDP, $500 uh, um, billion uh, in trade between our countries, uh, we are four countries uh, that uh, are, are the members. We are happy to say Canada is an associate country together with Singapore, together with New Zealand, uh, and I'm forgetting the other ones. Um, uh, New Zealand, Australia. Singapore, Australia, and UK. Singapore, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. And Canada, I'm sorry, I'm, my memory <laughs> boggles me. So, these are four associate countries, but we have 43 observer countries, 43 countries that want to do business with us. And according with our friends from the Global Mail, Canada, the Pacific Alliance is a must. Is a must because what we represent, because of what we uh, are, 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 we have the, the similar objectives in driving forward free trade, and. We're right now in, in a process in which uh, we talk about technology, we talked about in Industry 4.0. I have to say something, and, and these are clear examples on how the Pacific Alliance works. In a couple of weeks, actually, we are organizing our Innovation uh, and Technology Forum, which uh, I believe is gonna be in Colombia, uh, very soon. But previous to that, and, and, and I just wanna start as a strong example, FinTech. Who's here in FinTech? Who's related to the FinTech sector? <laughs> One, two, hopefully we can get some more, more into this. Uh, creative Industries, IoT, there we go. Okay, let's talk about FinTech. Uh, in June 27th, uh, we are having the Pacific Alliance extended to uh, associate countries. We're having a gathering with our top financial uh, executives from our regulator offices, from our Ministry of Finance, and we are working, we're gonna be working on how we establish a framework so that FinTech works in the Pacific Alliance. Uh, it's a little bit of a commercial within the Pacific Alliance. Mexico is the first country in the world with a fintech law. But the rest of our countries, we're going to have it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to provide a framework for business to happen. So if you talk about how can we support startup companies, innovators, well, first of all, we're opening a market. We're providing a stable structure in which business can be supported. And we can talk about, I think, independently of what our countries are doing, but I think number one, you have a full strong support. This year in July, the new president of Pacific Alliance is gonna be Peru. 
Uh, but we, we do a great deal of work individually through our offices um, to support uh, um, uh, startup companies to engage, number one, with international markets, because I, I think our, our, our investor friend talked about it earlier. Uh, we need to connect our companies with other companies, and we need to connect our investors with angel investors, venture investors, pension funds, and all the structures that are supporting the fintech sphere, I'm sorry, the, the startup sphere, to support greater business between the Pacific Alliance and the rest of the world. So. Thank you. So who is next with a comment about Pacific Alliance and entrepreneurship? Okay. Hello, good morning. Um, I agree with, with, with Rodrigo. Uh, Pacific Alliance countries are four countries that are very like-minded. Uh, that see in trade uh, the way to progress and, and grow. So uh, that's why it, it brought a lot, of, uh, a lot of momentum. It created a lot of uh, excitement around it because it came up to be in a moment that uh, we were actually seeing uh, the world going other way around, you know, with Brexit and all that. So Pacific Alliance is... Uh, this very important market that I would say that is very uh, progressive and tries to, in, in terms of trying to uh, move forward towards having uh, a, a free trade area. So basically taking it from where Rodrigo left it, uh, in, in terms of what this market is about, how to cooperate and how to move forward with the Pacific Alliance. What we have in front of us is that we have to work on uh, basically the, uh, the trade of services. Uh, we have, uh, the Pacific Alliance has committees that have to work on TBT issues, for example, on uh, WTO uh, agreements that we have uh, already in place with the, with the trade protocols. And so what we what we are working on and what we, uh, the way to move forward in, in cooperating in this is to uh, address the issues of uh, trade of services, movement of, pe of people, and trying to bring down all the uh, non-tariff barriers that uh, may, may still be, um, may still be uh, pulling back on, on some businesses that may still be uh, making it a little bit harder for some businesses to move from one country to the other. It's very important for us, uh, as government representatives, to hear from, from your companies, from, from the private sector, what these issues are, what the problems are when, when you are trying to trade, when you are trying to uh, find, uh, for example, the right talent in, in, in one of the countries. Uh, when you are trying to move people uh, or when you're trying to move services and, 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 and trade, uh, what the main issues and what the main problems that you're having are so that we can sit down with the other countries of the Pacific Alliance uh, and work them. And we can actually sit down in a committee where we have Colombia, Peru, uh, Chile, and Mexico and say, okay, this is an issue that we have how can we solve it? How can we move forward? And then we would build on the agreement that we have uh, and strengthen that really and strengthen our relationship with new agreements or modifications of those agreements. Uh, now that we have, we're going to have uh, Canada and New Zealand and Australia and Singapore joining the, 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 the trade protocol of the Pacific Alliance. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, a very productive relationship that we're going to have where we can benefit from the experiences and from the regulatory, um, the regulatory uh, know-how that these other countries may have that they can share with us and we can uh, still uh, keep building from there in, in terms of having a much more open and free market. Thank, Thank you, you, Fernando. Christian. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first, I, I want to thank uh, Miriam Lazarte for this uh, inviting me to this uh, uh, great event. This is the fifth one. Uh, because in the world right now, it's very important about uh, startups. I'm very agree with 
my two colleagues here, uh, what uh, they have said. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about my country, Colombia. Uh, in Colombia, you know, we are open to do business. Uh, Colombia is a country uh, that has changed a lot. Uh, if we see Colombia in the last 18 years, from two, uh, year 2000 to uh, last year, uh, we made quite a, a change in the economic, in the growing sector, in, I mean, in everything, in economics, in social. Uh, you know, uh, 20 years ago, Colombia was uh, a kind of uh, a special country in, 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 in Latin America. And right now, uh, with our countries like uh, Chile and Peru, are the fastest growing economies that we have in South America and Latin America with Mexico. Um, before the, the last decade, uh, we were uh, having almost 80% uh, of our business uh, from, like for example, from Canada, were about uh, mining, about oil, about uh, minerals, and it has changed a little bit uh, since uh, eight years ago. We start uh, changing a little bit, and the companies, like for example, the IT uh, companies, are getting uh, well into Colombia. With the help of the Pacific Alliance, and uh, now because we are four countries, and also because we sign a FTA, a free trade agreement with Canada uh, in the 2016, it helps also to Colombia and to the people to do business uh, in Colombia. So we are growing uh, very fast. And uh, I, I was asking uh, this week uh, why the people want to wants to go to Colombia to do business. And the first uh, thing, it was uh, because the way we are. We are very friendly. We are uh, nice people. Well, I'm talking too much. <laughs> we communicate a lot. And uh, our people has commitment in what they do. That's very important. I mean, maybe it's all Latin American countries, but in Colombia is very special. Because of the change of our country, imagine that uh, in, uh, in 2000, it's just an example, Medellin was one of the uh, most dangerous cities in the world. 1988, we have a lot of crime. I mean, it was, Colombia was having a very hard time in the world. And Medellin in 2013 gained the, the, the premium, like the most innovative city in the world. So it was as after 13 years. Colombia in the 2016 by the magazine, The Economist, they said Colombia was the country of 2016. So uh, if you see like uh, the foreign direct investment in Colombia in year 2000, it was $2 billion. Last year, it was $15 billion. In 2000, we, have, uh, we had a la, around a million tourists. Last year, we have six million and a half tourists. So that will show you why the people want to go, especially to Bogota and Medellin, who are developed a very good uh, uh, politics with the government for the startups companies. We have uh, now uh, another door, two cities are growing in startups, like uh, Barranquilla and Cali. So we have four cities. The principals, Bogota, Medellin. Uh, in Colombia, we have about uh, 1,600 uh, 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 angel uh, investors. Uh, so it's a country that is leading 
really the, the this kind this sector. So uh, another strong uh, uh, strength that we have in Colombia is our our uh, our oh, how do you say this? Uh, no, this uh, the global uh, the uh, fuerza laboral. It's the skills of the uh, labor work, market? the labor market, okay. uh, also the, the the law in Colombia, mm -hmm. is a very strong law, uh, so it it uh, gives a, like a confidentiality to the countries or to the people who is investing there. Also, uh, we have uh, some investors uh, uh, like. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, some soft landing uh, uh, agencies from Colombia who helps the the startups company like uh, Pro Colombia, uh, like the Minister of Ford, uh, of uh, Trade, uh, the Minister of Technology. Uh, they are working for that, and we have examples like uh, Ruta N, uh, like uh, Impulsa, like the Fondo Emprender and Parque eh, del Emprendimiento. They are very good right now and well known in all these countries. Uh, also, we have made some agreements uh, with, uh, for example, with TFO uh, and with the Canadian Cooperative Association. Uh, we have a, a memorandum of understanding between Mars and Ruta N and between uh, Rotan, uh, Ruta N and McMaster Innovation Park. And we have a lot of uh, companies that are uh, going to Colombia, maybe like uh, Johnson & Johnson Medical, Holcim, Scotia Bank right now. They have the, uh, the, all the call centers there and more than 80 Canadian companies that are uh, with us right now. As uh, they told, we are going to have in Medellin uh, the special event. is for June 12th to June 14. Uh, that would be very good because, I mean, it's all the country from Pacific Alliance that are going to be there. So I, I will invite you to go to Medellin. It's a pretty city right now. And uh, you can, uh, you know, do business in Colombia. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.